good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are listening to this, to the Monday Morning Podcast. Hey, glad to have you back. My name's Kayla Marcantonio. This is my husband, Matt, and we are the pastors, co-pastors. Also named White Shadow. White Shadow. For you Turbo fans. Yes. White Shadow. And, uh... <laughs> I literally can't stand that movie, but I do love that part. <laughs> when you have a toddler, and you watch the same movies a lot over and over oh, and over again. I hate that it's turbo. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Co-pastors at Cross Place Church. What else am I forgetting? That's it. And That's this it. Is, uh, Tell them about the po- Why do we do this? This First of all, this is episode 11. Uh-huh. 11. Um, Julian Edelman's old number. Now Tyquan <laughs> Thornton on the Patriots. Oh but my uh, gosh. number eleven. Where, when we get to episode twelve, I might have. I, I'm gonna come into Tom Brady jersey. Remind me. Remind me. That'd be funny because uh, it is football season after all. Episode, but he's not on the Patriots. Ep- <laughs> episode eleven. Um, we'll talk about what that is in a second. We always like to throw this disclaimer out there as well. This is a podcast for Crossing Place Church. We are the pastors of Crossing Place Church so that this conversation is taking conversations that Kayla and I have in private and bringing them out openly. Paul did this. He's talked about in 2 Corinthians to the Corinthian church, open heart. And we are all about full transparency and openness and conversation. We realize that if you're coming on the Sunday, or if we've not had the pleasure of being engaged in conversation or various things where you might only see us from the magic carpet. It's not really magic, I'm just being funny. The little carpet that we preach off of. And this goes past the few minutes we have on Sunday and gives a prolonged little dialogue there as well. So you can go back, listen to any of these podcasts on YouTube. We can watch them on Spotify. There's been 10 yeah. The honeymoon phase was number one, and number mm-hmm. 10 was Ooh, no, perfect, no perfect church. And now we're uh, into the next phase here with yep. episode 11. Episode 11. Which uh, we're calling Itching Ears. Yeah. Do you want to give some context, and maybe I'll read a scripture about it? Yep. So, um, well, I, I feel like I can't give context unless you read the scripture, if you want to go right. ahead and, and pull it up. Matt's well, yeah, gonna re- I'll read it yeah, then. Matt's going to read the scripture, and then we'll talk about I've it. I've had this Bible up here almost every time, always prepared, mm-hmm. and um, now we actually get to Yeah, to, you used to it read. last time, now you're using it this yep, time. Yeah, that's right. Um, all right, Hebrews... Hebrews 4. Oh, I didn't realize both our things were out Oh, my gosh. Not Hebrews. Second Timothy. Oh. <laughs> Hebrews was the <laughs> oh last. No, 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 like no, 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 no. I, my mind. Second Timothy uh, chapter 4. I guess we'll, we'll just we'll just do 2 through 5. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and will be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Paul speaking to Timothy again in that little piece there. And they will have, because they'll have itching ears, they'll turn away their, their ears will turn away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. So okay. that gives some context. Yeah. So I'll just, I guess I'll jump right in. This can go into a bunch of different things, but I just want to kind of, I don't know, we may go into all the different veins. Here we go. This is how this thought process started for me. I know, I just have been noticing over the last couple of years, and maybe I was living under a rock before, because a lot of these have been going on for a long time, how many believers believe things that are, like they hold on to comforts in their life yeah. that are not biblical. And based on that scripture, and just because we know how the enemy works, Like we can't, I just wanted to talk about some of those and I can't address all of them, but, um, we cannot hold to any truth that is not based in the gospel. That's not, Yeah. what I mean is like literal fables. Okay. And because what the word says and how, because we know how the enemy works, it could actually lead us to go astray Yeah. when we hold on to something that we believe is truth, but we also at the same time maybe no it's not it's like it's it's opening this sense of like double mindedness of like 
trusting in something that's not the Lord. Yeah. And it opens up for the enemy to be used in that way because our thoughts are going, well, if this is true, or at least I think it's true, then maybe this is true. And if that's true, then maybe this is true. So let me give you a perfect example. Probably about five years ago, I was introduced to this concept that I did not know was, I had no idea before was a thing. But I was introduced to this concept that some people believe, or it's actually a common belief that a red cardinal, that when you see a red cardinal, that it's one of a, if it's, it's a past loved one Mm -hmm. or something like that. And I always thought it was a sentiment and some people say it's a sentiment, but then I actually met people that really did believe it, believe this. They really, really, really did believe this and, and they're believers. And I was really, really shocked by all of it because I was like, that is essentially is the thought process of reincarnation, you know, that, that their soul is not in heaven or their soul is not even in hell, but it came back as a bird. And that is closely tied and related to some Eastern philosophies and religions. Okay. Go ahead. What's fun, what's as an inside insert here, like especially when you talk, when you talk about itching ears too, and they're talking about fables. Yeah. Or Paul was talking to Timothy about t- fables and what that church in Ephesus was all believing and stuff. But like, we're even not talking about like doctrine. No. We're talking about like people who have taken like kind of like, um, mythology yeah. or paganism yeah. into their view of what things like that look like. We're again, not even talking per se about like what you think about specific theology. It's no, things no, that no. like, this it's is things... like a root of like paganism yeah, or yes. reincarnation. Or... Well, and they don't know that. No, no, they no, 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 they, right, Some right. of these people wouldn't even know what the right. word reincarnation means. Right. They've never heard of it. They've never whatever, but it's, it's a seed from the enemy that floats into your mind space. Now, if you ask them, what's interesting is if you ask them, and I'm not going to stay on the red cardinal thing, but this is when this all formulated for me. If you if you ask them where, like if their if their mother, father, brother, sister was saved and you ask them where they are, they would tell you heaven. But at the same time, they're also believing that they are coming back as a cardinal to come whatever. And the reality is I know some people could be listening to this and think that this, this is so like nuanced, but it's really not. Um, that belief can can lead us into a whole slew of other things. It's a slippery slope to where you can really slide off into some thoughts that are not of God. Um, and it, but it all started with taking comfort in a thought that is not true yeah. and it can't be true. It can't be true because nowhere in the Bible does it say that we turn into animals. And again, that's an Eastern, yeah. an Eastern philosophy with reincarnation. I've even seen this, but I think it's because they're grieving. Right. You know, they at least take comfort in the fact of I'm seen, they see me, they whatever, but it's an, it's an open door and it's an open door to yeah. fables. And it's because we're like, tell me something that makes me feel better. Right. Tell me that's something the, that, yeah. that helps me heal, helps me soothe things over. But we're really putting our hope in something that's not real instead of the Lord. Yeah. Um, I even see this with like people who call out to talk to their dead loved ones, you know, um, I miss you or we went so deep so fast. No, I'm (laughs) just saying, no, 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 like like, we are ready. No, no, this is who we are. This is who I am at least. (laughs) Like I see these things with, or let's, okay, let's go, you know, let's go. No, no, go there. Just go. Yeah. yeah. Or even just the thought that like heaven is just clouds and that it's just us bouncing on clouds or, um, there's just, I see it in a lot of different things. I see it in even like, Okay, let's take another one, right? Where I'm a believer, but I'm having nightmares. So I go get a, a, a dream catcher and I put it over my bed. Mm-hmm. Well, the dream catcher, if you have one in your home and maybe you just use it for decoration, I would take it out. But the thought process behind that is it's like a Native American practice where you hang a dream catcher above your head and anything that's negative and could be coming to you at night, that it gets stuck in the catcher, you know, and that it doesn't come to you and that that is the thing that's warding off you having these nightmares. And so it really could be a slew of other things. It could be a lot of things, but that is actually a belief that's contrary to the Lord, Mm -hmm. where we say that the Lord is our protector, but it's all based on like, it really is all based on what makes me, what's an easy solve? What, what will soothe this? And I'm turning to fables. I'm turning to things that aren't really true. And so I really just kind of wanted to talk about like, 
us just opening up and analyzing any of our belief systems. And we really have to go to the Lord and be like, does this line up with truth? We got to ask people because um, we've got to compare it with scriptures, what we know. You know, I talked about the thing earlier about like people talking to dead loved ones or whatever. Yeah. And literally there is an entire story in the Bible where Jesus says, um, you know, he, he describes that there is a gap, that there is a chasm between, he says us and them and, um, meaning people in heaven and then, and then people in hell. I think it can also relate to earth and either of those two. And literally Jesus says there is a chasm and there is a gap and it cannot be crossed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the Bible also says, don't turn to mediums. They say, don't turn to people who do sorcery. Um, Solomon, who was, sorry, Saul, who was the first king mm-hmm. of Israel, actually went to a medium and heard some things. Like yeah. the medium actually told him something and his life spiraled after that in a terrible way. He actually heard something. But Jesus says that there's a chasm between all of these places and it cannot be crossed. Well, what that tells me is if you're hearing something and it's true because mediums can't hear things, it's not the person because they can't be crossed. Well, then we have to think to ourselves, who is it? Who is speaking? And yeah. I would say it's demons. Jesus yeah. even identifies that these are demonic forces that are speaking. So I know, yeah, you said we go really deep, but like that's an example where like we can be believers but we're walking in something that brings us comfort. Oh, I just want to talk to my mom. I just want to talk mm-hmm. to my dad. I just want to talk to my grandma. I just want to feel their energy. They're in whatever place they're in, they can't cross it. Yeah. They can't speak to you. So now I'm opening up for demonic oppression, dem- demons, to speak through mediums or literally to speak through to us personally. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing it out of a place of comfort in what's really not of God, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so, I don't know. I, I think I think that a lot of people, they find comfort in this, um, in a bunch of different things. You could go to many different things. I have a personal story that I, I'll share after I hear what you say. But, like, in seeking our comfort, it's actually taking us away from truth. Yeah. Who could really give us comfort? Yeah, no, that that's good. Yeah, right. He's the source of all comfort. Yeah. The holy one of the Holy Spirits. Second he has many Corinthians chapter one. Yeah, he has many expressions and Isaiah eleven two and the seven the seven spirits of the one spirit but seven expressions. Yeah. Um he is the comforter. Think about that. Yeah. He's yeah, the, the, the literal name. comforter. That's that's who he is, and he lives on the inside of every single one of us. What's difficult about those things is that people, it's it's one of those things I believe that we, like it's the head knowledge of these things, right? Like we know that who, that is who the Holy Spirit is. We know God is the source of comfort. Yeah. We know God loves us. Like say, I know I'm saying that kind of like haphazardly, mm-hmm. but it's like, yeah, I know but I don't know. Mm-hmm. And if if it if you knew knew mm-hmm. what the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus did, if you knew what your yes did to his blood, if you knew what all of those things actually did, then your grief, your heaviness, the joy for mourning, right? Yeah. All those things come under the one source who lives inside of you. Yeah. So then it doesn't, you don't even have to go down the rabbit hole of itching the ears yeah. because you know where all of those things come from. And in yeah. Timothy, I know Paul wrote two letters to Timothy, who is mm-hmm. a spiritual son of his, mm-hmm. who is pastoring this church in Ephesus in these two deals here. And he, they covered a wide range of things, especially about leadership there. Yeah. But I know through some context of this, through studying previously, was that one a lot of the fables and different types of elements at play, where they were really big on like conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm. They were really big on things that like just genuinely didn't matter yeah. and they were putting all of their time or attention. I think a lot of that today comes into like the YouTube rabbit holes mm, yeah. is today where you'll go, I can find anything that comforts me in my belief of God mm-hmm. on Google. Mm-hmm. So I can find any sort of thing that wants to even validating a feeling on Google because all it takes to become an author on Google is finding a platform, yeah. mashing some buttons and clicking send. And so what happens is my purity of the gospel may have been pure when I came to the Lord, right? But I'm so 
oh, I'm so distraught over somebody passing. Mm -hmm. I just need to have some sort of comfort. Yeah. And then I start going down these conspiracy theory or fable places on YouTube or other types of things that take and distort scripture, right? Yeah. Where I can then feel confident and actually feel like I'm not being led uh, led astray in any of those things. It's why yeah. that Paul's specifically saying there, they will literally ditch the ones who are speaking truth and they're going to turn to specifically the teachers mm -hmm. or the sources. That teach that. That teach that. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah, it yeah. goes one thing from belief yeah to then oh i'm captivated by it. okay wait a minute mm -hmm. i knew about the red cardinal thing yeah maybe out of a yeah innocent place yeah well then i start seeing red cardinals all the time mm -hmm. wait a minute yeah. there must be something there so now it came from being a place out of comfort is now like dare i say Am I stinking talking to this bird? Mm, yeah, you know, exactly. No, but like out of no, then, but think about but, that. Like right, think about right. like because the world has made that so normal, and you've been that that you've been taught that, and that's what your grandma did, and that's what your grandpa did. But like literally, think about that. We were talking to a bird. <laughs> be anyway. I'm sorry. And so maybe as I need I'm, to get off of that, but may, I have another. But example. Maybe but maybe as anyway. I'm doing that, and then I start going. Now wait a minute. Yeah. Wait. Wait a minute. Am I crazy? I need to find... Well, we're talking what, to a bird and we're not talking to the Lord. I need to anyway. find what's what Christianity says about that. Yes. And so instead yes. of maybe going to like the source, yeah. i.e. this is the source, we get on the YouTube train. I've not yeah. YouTube this, but yeah. I can assume that I could get on the YouTube train and I could find some teacher yeah. that's yeah. itching these and I go, oh, wait a minute. And then before long, I'm following Billy Bob yeah. Hornet Nest YouTube yeah. YouTube channel that is all false teaching and yeah. all all an abomination to mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. And then I start going, oh, wow, it wasn't just the car. Oh, so when I die this or when this with heaven or these various things. And then now I'm like, forget the sounds. Okay, I'm going to follow yeah. under this alignment. So, That's what he was telling them then yeah. in a, with a modernized example. So let's talk about what I even found on the internet the other day inadvertently. I didn't even mean to. So... When I was when we were finishing up the book, what we did is we went through like the book we just Atmosphere Breakers. And so we were checking it, we were making sure that every scripture and every reference in the Bible to scripture was that we had gotten it correct, that we didn't put a wrong reference or put a wrong name or whatever. Well, anyway, I found a story that I had put was Moses, but it was actually Abraham. And it's when God shows up in his manifest presence, but like, you know, he showed up to Moses in a burning bush. Well, in this instance, he showed up in the physical form of a smoking pot, okay? Almost like an incense pot that would have been used in the temple or tabernacle or whatever, even though that wasn't a thing yet. The tent of meeting. Thank you. So he, he shows up with this, like, in, in the form of a smoking pot. Well, I was looking up the reference to make sure that that was... A Moses, but then I found out that it was Abraham. Okay. And when, oh, I remember this. And when I, remember I found I... this, <laughs> I found no lie, at least 50 sources saying that this was validation from the Lord that it was okay to smoke pot. Mm -hmm. I literally was like, it wasn't just one article, it wasn't two, it was pages. Yeah many multiple sources and not reputable sources, but sources. And they were like, no, this is why it's okay to smoke pot. And God's okay with it because he showed up as a smoking pot. And here's my issue. If you want to say smoking weed is fine and have your own thoughts on it, that's one thing. Right. Don't misquote. Don't scri misquote scripture. No, don't 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 take like that. Don't take that example and try to type but and that's, shadow but that that's to the that. Itch, right. It's the itching ears. I want to I want to do what I want, and so I'm going to validate this, which that's not even the same context. It was a whole thing. So, you know, and I know. Well, oh, go do ahead. you remember something? On, something on Google? I had found this. Is so. This is back to we we're talking about like yeah. how internet can. Yeah. I am. Uh, when I was reading through. King David, David, the whole the whole stuff that spans through kings and or no, yeah, Samuel, kings. I think there's a leak over there, and um, I has, was so fascinated. This was like a year, year and a half ago with Jonathan, Saul's son, and David's relationship, mm -hmm. and how the dad's behavior, like how the wedges that came between, and like then Saul, uh, Jonathan trying to save his life, and and then like what's so funny. 
Yeah. This has nothing to do with anything. But at the end of their lives, when when Jonathan and spoiler alert, when Jonathan and Saul died, David like went and retrieved their bodies to give them a proper burial. Wow. Even Saul, even yeah, Saul, even but Saul. Anyway, so I'm like this relationship between David and Jonathan is just something I had not, never seen before. Yeah. You Google that. I already, I already knew where you're going with that. And that's yeah. where everybody with homosexuality, mm-hmm. they literally were pages of blogs saying David yeah. and Jonathan were secret lovers right. because they couldn't even take in connotation what a relationship between two friends. Two friends. Would actually look like in a genuine God ordained yeah. relationship with two friends. Yeah. And then they take this, again, omitting all of scripture. But what yeah. I'm saying is, again, yeah. here we go with the, oh, wait, this yeah. sounds good, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah, type of stuff. I totally agree with all of that. And so, um, yeah, Google is not our friend a lot of the time because it validates things that aren't true. And I, I know we're going to de- uh, this. We went from Red Cardinals we're, to. We're going to all these different places. But I, my plea is to just, you know, for everyone on here is like, we have to take all of our th- well, that's what take all of our thoughts captive, yep. and we have to make them surrender to Christ. Like I can't remember the verse, but that's literally in Scripture. You know, every thought captive and make them surrender to Christ. And so, if we're doing something out of tradition or habit, we probably need to go back to like, how did this habit start? Yep. Like, yep. where did this thought process come from? And then, does it align with the gospel? Does it align with Scripture? I'm even thinking of something as silly as. You know, um, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of all of even the because we talked a lot about death, like things associated with death. But, you know, and there's nothing like I'm not. Oh, if my parents are watching this. Like, I'm not saying you did anything wrong. But it's like I always heard on New Year's Day, um, you have to eat certain things to bring oh. good luck into the year. <laughs> and literally, we always knew that we were having <sighs> black eyed peas, cabbage. And then there was something else on on. uh New Year's Day. I hate all of those. That's a things. fable, though. That's again an example. I literally hate of, all of those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, sure. Now, sure. do 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 my family really believe that if they eat these things, that they're going to get good luck? You know, they'd say you got to eat your black eyed peas because of this reason. You got to eat your cabbage so you can make money all year long. And I really like. I would hope not, but yeah. You know, but even like those things, like I'm not saying be, you know, I'm not trying to say be legalistic. But, like, some people may really believe that. Or th- those are examples of things that we, like, really do. You know, you, f- you find a penny heads up and you're like, yep. oh, I have good luck today. You know, I throw a, I throw, you're, we're wishing at wishing wells. Who right, are we right, wishing right, to? Right, right, right. We're throwing right. coins into into all these places and we're like, oh, I, I hope this thing goes true. Right. You know what I mean? Um, we can even get so simplistic. Again, I'm not trying to get legalistic. Make a wish on your birthday candle. Mm-hmm. Who are we making a wish to? I started praying. That's what I, <laughs> when I realized that I was like, I was like, who am I making a wish to? The universe? You know what I mean? That this just happens? Like there's so many things within our day that it actually doesn't line up. So that's why I started praying. Before I blow my candle, I started saying, Lord, this please bless me this year, you know, whatever. I, and I, people may think that that's crazy, but it's little things like that that's like wishing on a shooting star. It's like no, the universe can't grant you anything. Right? Who are we? Who are we wishing these things to? Well, if it's, it's not all, unto the Lord. It's that thing about that whole eternity is in the hearts of man type thing. Yeah. So it's like everybody from a pure basic of humanity is craving some semblance of there is more. Yeah. What is purpose? Why am I here? Yeah. Is this it? And the they go searching in society and humanity from here had gone searching for all of those things. And so that's why, that's what pagan worship looked like. Or, um, oh, there he's Mount Sinai commandments. Yeah. Golden, uh, calf worship. Like everyone's from the origin of time has create, has been perplexed with this idea of more Eve, like the fruit more, Mm -hmm. you'll acquire more understanding and more knowledge. And so it's like when you, not that those things are inherently bad yeah you know what i mean like you, you, different types of things i don't know where people fall in the christmas thing you know what i mean and 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 um and all that types of elements i'll be careful with younger ears even though i don't know i'd be watching yeah. a podcast but like all these things are not inherently bad no. it's the idea no. of going though they all fashion and shape in some way unhealthy or healthy mm-hmm. how we view the father and so this yeah. is when we get yeah. into that place mm-hmm. of going 
What if your birthday wish came true, but your prayer didn't? Yeah, yeah, right. What right, would right, happen? Right, you right. know what I mean? Where could your thoughts go with that? Oh, is there even a God? Yeah. Is it about energy? Is it about karma? Exactly. Like, exactly. Now like, we're talking about new age things. So we've hit all the gap of like mysticism, new yeah, age, paganism, yeah. all those different types of things where we go. It can be, this is why Paul, I believe, was writing this clearly under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This has was this stood the test of time then, and it even it even still will now. And I yeah. think what I I think this is a big thing. Everyone wants to get on the big like false prophet and false teacher and false pastor, false whatever train. Yeah. And I think that Christians use that as a buzzword to go people who don't interpret scripture the way that they do. They yeah. think it's just false. Yeah. Right. And the reality is, like, especially when you read about scripture, they're talking about people that are literally Mm -hmm. communicating in a way when they were false prophets or false teachers that would literally, like, disprove the deity of Christ and his blood and his sacrifice. People who are literally, like, take that and throw it in the trash. You know what I mean? It wasn't things like we probably think of. It was people who were scratching ears to try to lead people completely intentionally astray from Christ. Not somebody who had a different theology yeah. on what they interpreted with scripture. Yeah. It was people who intentionally yeah. were wolves in sheep clothing mm-hmm. that were like the Nicolaitans who were coming in out of revelation and going, Oh yeah, I am undoubtedly going to cause a little dissension here and, and do these things to cause him to go away. And Corinthians I've talked about Corinthians a lot. We've been in there in daily reading. Uh, Paul had to issue a correction yeah. to this really spiritually active and lover of God church because this prominent teaching was coming in that there is no resurrection of the dead. Mm. So these teachers were coming in. Paul even says that they were getting so, these false teachers were getting so um, vibrant that they were taking his, they were um, plagiarizing and fabricating letters and miss signing his name to something he didn't say. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they were, they were literally doing these things. And then they were teaching that there was no resurrection of the dead. Okay, wait a minute. The Pharisees and Sadducees, Pharisees believed one way about it. The Sadducees said, no, no, no. Now remember, Christ has come, he's died, resurrected. The church has started. And so now there's like in the church, there are converted Pharisees, Sadducees. Slaves, freed people. Slaves, freed people. Men, women. women. Yeah, and so it's like, oh, Gentile, Jew. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And everyone has a different perspective. And everyone's bringing in. Bringing in. And having to, this is why the gospel is dead to the old and into the new, like their own ideals and traditions from what they grew in. That's right. And so like, oh, wait a minute. There really isn't a resurrection of the dead. And then this started being sown. Well, here's the thing. You might be thinking, oh, is that some just little theology? Yeah. No. That is the crux of Christianity. Yeah. Resurrection of the dead is the crux. Yeah. That That is, we are not, if we don't believe, A, yeah. that Jesus resurrected from the dead, salvation is gone. And if we don't believe that we'll resurrect from the dead, not yeah. just in the spirit, but in the physical, then it takes all of our hope of the future and it takes all of what is to come and throws it in the trash can Mm -hmm. and it frames everything we're thinking. It gets back into what you said about the heaven thing about people then thinking, Oh, I'm just going to be on a cloud floating somewhere like in the clouds. Mm -hmm. Heaven is genuinely God's dimension. Heaven is not in the clouds. It's not simply even up there. We don't even need to look up. I don't think, I think we can look to our side. Heaven is very close. I believe because it's the dimension where God is. And what's going to happen is there's going to be that dimension where God is now is then going to come on the earth with a new heaven and new earth at some point. Right. And what I'm, what I mean to say is, so we think that we are just some floating babies with harps or one day this will be the case when the reality is yeah. like, we're going to have a physical body. We are going to yeah. work. We're going to labor. Yeah. We're going, that is actually going to be yeah. what we think heaven is, yeah. is actually going to be on the earth with yeah. the new heaven and the new earth, yeah. like not in the clouds going from like galaxy to galaxy right, point. Right. And it, and so what I, our bodies are going to look like what Jesus's body did post his resurrection. Yeah. His body looked in the appearance of man, but it was but, glorified. But it was you couldn't, gl- recognize, you him. You couldn't recognize him, and he was going through walls. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> he, true. Time had no bounds. He didn't eat. He didn't eat, but he still looked. Right. Th- so think about that. So when we we're like, oh, what are we gonna look like? What was yeah. it gonna case? God thought this and this right. would be 
perfect enough yeah. for Adam and Eve and yeah. humanity. Yeah. This was the baseline of his creation, right? Yeah. That design is not going to go away. I know I'm getting really deep now. What I'm trying to say is though, when we, but when we have a pinpoint and just go like, I'm going to say, like we've talked about in our messages, I'm going to just say a prayer, the sinner's prayer, which isn't in scripture. I'm going to say the sinner's prayer, which isn't in scripture. And then I am going to be saved. And I'm, you know, I said the prayer. So I'm saved. Now, what does saved mean? Well, now I'll just go to heaven and escape hell. Now, if my, if my thought process through my old traditions, ideals, or what was taught is now I'm just going to be with Jesus one day. Then that denotes the fact of, no, you're with Jesus now. Yeah. From our birth, Jesus and the Father, and now the Spirit, will have been with us from the moment that we say yes to the Lord. There's no period where that relationship is now left. The only thing different is we'll be leaving when we die. We'll be with him. And when he comes back, we'll be from when I was 19 and said yes to the Lord, there's not going to be a time now for the rest of eternity where I'm not with the father. But if I'm only viewing him as some mystical being in the clouds, right? That one day, one day I'll be healed. One day I'll be whole. One day I'll stop struggling with sin. One day I'll do that. No, that, that day is no, no perfection, but that day is now. Yeah. And also then, so it even frames Everything. all those it things. It all frames how we it think all, about, about all those things, element. all those things. And, you know, when you were describing like all the different people that came, that were now a part of the church, you know, it's interesting. My mind kind of went to this place of like, um, you know, you've got one person that's like, I was there when Lazarus was raised from the dead. Yep. You cannot tell me oh, that, that they were there, whatever. And then you got someone else that's probably like, I heard that was all made up yeah. and whatever. And then yeah, you've got yeah, someone yeah. in the middle that's like, guys, Jesus resurrected. Like I saw him. It doesn't matter if Lazarus did. I saw him. I saw him go into heaven and they're all arguing about it because they're all coming in with their perceptions. And so we really have to take like anything we've been taught, anything that's been even like just tradition. And we're like, Lord, like, is this, is yep. this of you? Um, and I do think that there are some times where in, anyway, I do think there are times though where spiritual things happen and with the Lord, the Lord is speaking to you by his spirit in a supernatural way. And we actually, because of these preconceived thoughts, accredit it to something else rather than him. Yeah. Okay. So let me give you an example. We talked about this just the other day. So my grandfather uh, was diagnosed when I was around nine or nine years old with stage four lung cancer. And he was given about three months to live. Um, he lived six or nine, um, but he gave his heart to the Lord. And yep. um, anyway, so a year after his passing, we it was actually no, it wasn't a year. It was close to a year, but anyway, it doesn't matter. He, it was later. It was almost a year later. It was either on my birthday or like the day before my birthday, and we were going to the graveyard and um, to like change flowers. Like anyone that's done that, you know what to do. You're going and you're cleaning up everything and making it look nice. And so, um, we were out there and one of the things that I had always asked my grandfather, anytime I went to a church camp or dance camp or vacation, he would always give me money. He was always just giving lavish gifts to me. My mother would be like, you know, that's his daughter. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, don't you do don't that. Need you don't need that. to be doing that. And he'd bring me to the back room and hand me a hundred dollar oh, bill. Nice. You know what I mean? Don't tell mom. Don't tell yeah, mom. Yeah. So that was, you know, whatever. He was just very lavish in his generosity towards us that way. Well, anyway, I'd always joked about asking him for a horse. He'd be like, what, what do you want me to get you? I'd be like, I want a horse. Well, nobody got me a horse, but anyway, so we go to the graveyard and you got to imagine this is like backwoods, Louisiana. It's actually in Flatwoods, Louisiana. If hey, you've ever, hey. it's like, I'm telling you, it's like literally like back roads, back of hills, um, tons of jokes that could be made about that. But there's trees everywhere. Kayla there's... once said about Flatwoods, and it was actually about Gorham. When we were dating, she, I said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to Gorham. I said, what's that? She said, it's the town where you get no cell phone service and kids walk around with no pants. 
I didn't say pants. Oh. I said shoes. Shoes. Ah. No shoes. And that's still true yeah, to yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. No disrespect. Yep. I have a, a, a family friend who told Matt when he met me, he said, you need to be careful of of that family because they'll bury your body in sunk hills or, yes, or foot hills. Yes. And those hills were right next to oh, Gorham or whatever, yeah. So, it, which is right next to Flatwoods. So anyway. So we're in Flatwoods with so the we're horses. In Flatwoods. Well, okay, you ruined the story. Anyway, so <laughs> we're there at the graveyard and it's like the day before my birthday or whatever. And I hear like a horse neighing. And I was like, no. I, yeah, I've been, I was going to do it, but I'm not. So I have been to this graveyard like upwards of, you know, five years that I can remember for other family members that have passed and cleaning graves and whatever. And so um, I guess that's just what people do in their spare time in my family is they go clean up people's graves. But anyway, so we go there and I see this, I hear this neighing and I'm like, where in the world are there horses? Like that doesn't make any sense. I've been here uh, tons of times. And I look over at the fence that surrounds the the graveyard and there's literally like a miniature horse with its little head poking over the, the fence. And it's like a wild horse. Was the name Little Sebastian? It's not. But anyway, so, <laughs> okay. But like, uh, uh, little Sebastian. Okay, can we bring it back? So, <laughs> oh, this was a legit wild horse. Yeah. This was not a horse that was someone's property. Like I had never seen one before. And I went over and I'm like petting this thing, and it was just the sun setting. It was like a beautiful moment. And I always look back to that because for a brief moment, I wondered, I wondered for a brief moment if either my grandfather was the horse or (laughs) if my grandfather had sent the horse. I remember that happening. And I just remember feeling weird about that. And I kind of went on about it, but I thought about it often. And so now looking back, I remember like feeling peace, feeling the Lord's presence in hindsight, didn't really know what was happening then. But what I would say about that situation is that the Lord knew that I missed my grandfather, missed him terribly, missed out on years from him, knew what I had asked and had was like, hey, this is like a little reminder that your grandfather loved you. And so do I. Yeah. And that's how I take that. And that, you know, so there are spiritual things that can happen. And sometimes it's the Lord showing us, I see you, I care about you, but we can't give like any credit to it. Um, except for the Lord. And if we can't give the credit to the Lord, then we need to know it's not of him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at at all. Because that's where we get we get taken away and our thoughts go and it really leads to a place where it, it we make things not about him. I would also say, for example, last thing, is that if you are seeing a lot of like, okay, if like every time you're walking through the parking lot you find a penny with the the heads up thing, I don't know. Instead of saying, I'm going to have a lucky day, I would say, Lord, what does this mean? You know, because maybe you're very prophetic or you're prophetic and the Lord speaks to you through signs or numbers. Yeah, you know, yeah. I have cousins that are very prophetic and those one time, you know, or uh, Kristen, Rich and Kristen are worship pastors. They like Kristen for the, I think the year she was 22, she saw the number 23 her entire year. She kept seeing it. She would get on an airplane or a hotel number and there was always a number 23. And she went to the Lord and was like, you know, what does this mean? And it was just a confirmation of the year to come. And she said 23 was her best year yet. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, we don't always have to attribute it to these like weird fables that we think it's about. Really, we go, okay, Lord, what are you saying? Holy yeah. Spirit, show me. And because he's clearly, he's clearly speaking to you. And if it's not him, then it's someone we shouldn't be listening to. Yeah. And when we put a bow on all this and and what we talk about and what's just the biggest heart is, this right here is Holy Spirit, God, Jesus's words. Jesus is the word. Mm -hmm. It's alive and powerful. There's no contradictions. This is the story of God, the prophetic nature of God, the heart of God. And so I know sometimes the reason why we can catch on to fables, conspiracy theories, or bad theology from the resurrection of the dead to all those things is because what someone's telling us makes us feel good, makes us feel good and brings us comfort. And we want to believe those things. And I know it might not be so sexy to sit down and do a deep dive in scripture because that's harder than just watching someone else's words. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about Googling the right thing. You taking, you sitting down in your prayer room, and you opening scripture, maybe you need a commentary or two, that's fine. 
get a scripture you can under, uh, a version a translation you can understand yeah you can, NLT NIV whatever and just studying that yeah and just asking genuinely asking like you did Holy Spirit what are you do what are you saying in these yeah. things yeah and what are you leading in give me some clarity and then before long he is the spirit that leads into truth the yeah. truth of the father so he'll be able to lead you into those things yeah. right so like that should be the first place I know that's sim- no. super simplistic yeah. but like genuinely look and, f- and read especially if you call yourself a believer yeah, like we're scribing that this is truth and believing yeah. it in our hearts Everything. and so that needs to be the place uh, where we go in all in all things well Let's pray. This was good. And uh, we'll pray over over this, and then we'll uh, hit our way. Episode 11 in the yeah. books. Father, we thank you that yes. your word is alive and powerful, mm. that your word is truth. We thank you that your word cuts between yeah. joint and marrow. We thank you that you are the great physician, the great surgeon, and you never le- leave us. You never forsake us. You never leave us wanting or desiring more. You always lead into truth. Holy Spirit, Jesus, you are mm-hmm. truth. Father, you are truth. So I just pray right now, Lord, yeah. That there's any belief, tradition, ideology that we have that is scratching our ears a little bit, that yeah. ascribes to, the, to this verse in Timothy, Lord, yeah. that we would uh, run from it, Lord, that we would run from yeah. sin or the very temptation of, that we'd have a good understanding yeah. of what you're trying to say. Is, and uh, I just thank you, Lord. And we just pray that anyone who has a platform, anyone that has authority, anyone that has a voice, Lord, that they would be speaking into sound doctrine and sound theology and sound truth, Lord that anyone that's leading people astray by itching ears, that they would be convicted by Mm -hmm. you, Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit, you would take what was been misguided and bring it back to the origin of good, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus, for that. In your precious name, amen. 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 Episode 11 in the books. Until next time, have a great day. Love you. Meaning Matt.